Hi, I'm David Lawrence, CEO and founder of the Mission Gate Foundation. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about the brace debate, really the argument for and against using orthotic devices or utilizing braces. Let me start off with a couple of things. First, a kind of disclaimer statement or a conflict of interest statement. We have no funding of any kind or support of any kind from any manufacturer of braces, um, orthotics, or sleeves. This is all information that you're gonna get from us based on 30 years of experience fitting and working with complex care patients, as well as opinion, all right? So you're gonna get a lot of information, but this is not going to be research-based or come from that kind of research data. There is some research out there, but it's somewhat limited, and some of what's out there is supported or sponsored by the manufacturers. So you have to at least question some objectivity there. With that in mind, Let's talk about some definitions because a lot of different people might be watching this video. And just to make sure we're all talking about the same thing. First of all, what is an orthotic? By definition, it's a rigid or semi-rigid device that is used to either support or align the body as well as to correct or prevent a deformity. Now that can be really at any joint in the body. You could have it on your knee, on your ankle, wrist, shoulder, it doesn't really matter, wherever you need something external to the body to stabilize, support, or assist. That's an orthotic. So what is a brace? Because people use the term brace all the time, really is synonymously with orthotic. And you pretty much can. A, a brace really is an orthotic. It's an external device that helps to create stabilization and or realignment. And also that idea of propulsion. That means some floor reaction, some pushback, some movement going forward. All that can come from a brace. A sleeve is also a term that should be utilized and it's something people don't fully understand. I get patients come to me a lot saying, I'm using a knee brace to play sports or to play tennis. And with that brace, you know, I I'm stabilizing my knee. And it turns out being a sleeve. So I have to re remind them, a sleeve is designed as a compression device to help control swelling or um, give you some sort of reminder, postural or proprioceptive reminder to movement and how you're moving. Very helpful, but it's not a stabilizing brace. If you think you're getting stabilization, you must have something that has enough structure to do so. So with that being said, really important that we are not gonna be talking about brands. We're not talking about products here. We're not trying to, to get into one is better than the other. It's just simply this idea of should we utilize or shouldn't we utilize. So the, the best way I think to answer those things or that general question is to answer questions I hear from patients. And one of the first ones is, will a brace make me weaker? Will it make me stiffer? If I put that brace on, I'm just gonna get weaker. Is that true? To some extent, the answer to that is locally, yes. If you put a brace on someone's ankle, you're going to make that uh, ankle do a little less work and be restricted a little bit in motion. So that will potentially make you a little weaker locally as well as a little stiffer. What do I do about that? Well, one is a very simple exercise program that you would do associated with any brace you receive to work on strength, mobility, and flexibility around that joint. When you're not in the brace, make sure you use it to a full range, you strengthen those muscles, and you maintain good motion and flexibility. The second issue is a wearing plan. Use the brace only as much as you need to use it. You wouldn't wear a brace all the time. You turn on the TV on the weekend and you'll see athletes out there playing and have a brace on. Um, but I can guarantee you when that game's over, the brace comes off. So the same with you, you don't put a brace on and wear it all the time unless you need to. If you have an arthritic knee and you're walking and to be able to walk, you need a brace, you'd wear it for walking, for your exercise and take it off when you're around the house. So you're not getting weaker than you need to. Some people need to use a brace all the time. That is gonna be what they need. And they need to understand that with that, there is gonna be some loss of motion, potentially if I don't do good exercise associated with it. So next question would be, why would I even use a brace? If this brace is gonna make me a little weaker locally and gonna make me potentially stiffer, shouldn't I just avoid a brace? Well, there's really three good reasons why you should use a brace. And one is to build confidence, confidence in movement. Two is to improve function and fitness overall. And number three is to prevent or decrease compensatory habits. Let's unpack those three things because they're, they're, they're each important. Confidence is one. If you feel like your ankle is weak and I'm gonna sprain it if I take a step or I do much with it, you're gonna to tend to not do things. You're gonna disassociate from things, you're gonna discontinue things you're doing. And that loss of confidence is gonna grow in your inability to get back to doing things that you want to be able to do. 
Number two is this idea of fitness uh, and function overall. Let's say I don't wear a brace because I'm gonna make my ankle weaker. But because I'm not wearing a brace, I have no confidence, which means I don't get out and do anything, which means I don't go for a walk, which means I don't exercise. Now my whole body is getting weaker and stiffer. So if I did use a brace, yes, I'd have to deal with the local issues around that ankle, but at the same point, I'd be getting fitness and function to my whole body, so I'd stay in better shape. Kind of that idea of cutting off your nose to spite your face. You don't want to just say, I'm not gonna wear a brace because it's gonna make me weaker, and then I get weaker at a systemic level or all over because I'm not using a brace. So there's a good reason there. And the third uh, is also very important is something I face with patients a lot. And this idea of compensatory patterns. When we're in pain, let's say we have a, a, a right ankle sprain and, and, it, and it hurts, we tend to offload that leg. We're gonna shift our weight to the left, put more weight on the left side of our body. And how the body tends to transfer energy or force is much more diagonally. So from the right ankle into the left knee. Now the whole left leg will take more force, but if I'm trying to limp and kind of prevent too much force on that right ankle, I'm gonna shift my weight and my left knee and left leg are gonna take a lot more force. So what happens is a scenario I'll, I'll fill you in on. Patient comes in to me and says, I got left knee pain. It's been hurting um, for about six months, took me a while to get in to see the doctor, got x-rays, said you should go to therapy, got some arthritis, got some strain, some overuse injury, and he's coming into physical therapy. And I ask him, okay, any other injuries going on? Well, not really, you know, nothing else. No, well, yeah, two, three years ago, I hurt my ankle pretty bad sprain, limped a lot on it, but slowly it stopped hurting, right? Why did it stop hurting when you gotta think about that? If he didn't get a good therapy and it stopped hurting, maybe it was that he was offloading it, not putting much weight on it, and kind of limping and got used to limping and just, that's how he walks now. Now over the, la the next couple of years, you're overloading that left knee in a way that it's not designed to be overloaded. And you create irritation to that knee. Now the knee starts to become a problem. That's why you're coming to therapy, because now my knee hurts. And when you really quiz them, they'll say, yeah, you know, it's interesting. Over the last three or four weeks, maybe, or a month, my right ankle started hurting again. Why? Because now your left knee hurts too. So you're gonna offload that pressure back towards your right, which is your bad right ankle, which now still bothers you. And now you have both a right ankle and a left knee problem. Those compensatory problems come on very quick, well, very slowly, but very easily, very naturally, and you don't even know you're doing it. I have patients, I say, did you limp at all? With, no, not at all, and then the wife chimes up and says, oh, he's been limping for three years. He just won't admit it. It's like, oh, okay, well, this came on kind of slowly, but others can see that movement pattern. So bracing and the right therapy approach to the ankle issue originally could have prevented the knee problem. So compensatory movements, problems, and deficits are a problem. The other issue then could be, can a brace actually improve stability? Because that's really the objective question, right? If you say, well, okay, I get over the fact that it might make me a little stiffer, weaker because I'm gonna get these other benefits from it. But truly, can it stabilize me? Can, does it really work? And here's where you have to go to the research. And there is some research out there. It's, it's scant and it shows in different directions of the efficacy of bracing. But I will tell you, most do come down on the side that a brace does help and does work if a number of things really important it is the right length, the right fit, the right function of a brace. So having the wrong brace or any one of those things can make that, that brace ineffective. But if those things are in place, it can be effective. This does not include a sleeve. You can have a very good sleeve, but you can't say that's stabilizing my knee joint. It's helped compression, it feels good, it helps swelling, those are all positives. So let's unpack these issues of length, fit, and function. Length is really important when you think of a brace. And the number one complaint I get for patients is they say to me, listen, I don't wanna put this big knee brace on, right? This thing goes from the middle of my thigh all the way down to the middle of my shin. I've got a lot of, of brace there. I just really don't want to wear all of that brace. I found this thing at the uh, supermarket that's only a couple inches above and below my knee. It's really not very long at all. Won't that do the same thing? And the reality is no, it won't. When you think of how bracing works and the physics of that or the mechanics of that, bracing is all set up in a three-point pressure or three-point locking system. What does that mean? It means how a brace works is it has two pressure points on one side and one pressure point on the opposite side. When those two come together, you lock that joint into an alignment plane to keep it stabilized, right? If I shorten this leverage here, 
I have a very small mechanical advantage, and this brace is going to do very little to stabilize me. So I need a brace, even if I may not like the length, I need the patient to understand that if without that length, you don't have leverage. And without leverage, you don't get a lock. You don't get a mechanical lock that makes the joint or makes the brace stabilized. And the second issue is this fit idea. If you pick the wrong brace off the shelf, <coughs> or even custom made, but it doesn't fit you very well, then it's not going to stabilize you. I really encourage you to check out our orthotic selection videos because those videos are really gonna talk about why you would choose a certain device or a certain brace one way or the other. And that helps to make sure that you get the right fit of the device. And the last is function. In other words, how do I functionally utilize that device? When do I use it? How do I use it? All the time, part of the time, for certain activities. These are all things that take a lot of thought process and things you nearly need to make work through and be sure you're using the right brace at the right time. Unfortunately, in this country, there's a lot of braces in closets or in dumpsters, which people had the best intentions of getting, but never utilized for a couple of different reasons, mainly associated to, to selecting the wrong brace and fitting. So again, check out those videos on orthotic selection and on orthotic fitting to learn more about how to get this down correctly. And the last issue is on this component is structural stability versus motor inability. What are you doing with the brace? What are you trying to accomplish? If I need structural stability, yes, you get the right brace fit correctly, you can get stabilization. But can you get motor, can you help motor inability? Can you get some propulsion, some pushback? And yes, with carbon fiber devices, with devices that have the right materials involved, they will bend and return that energy back to you. So there is some propulsion capability there. Um, and that does work. So those things are pretty well established. And those are things we'll talk more about in those fitting and, and selection videos. So let's talk about simply, does a brace work? Do, do braces work? And in my opinion, the answer to that is yes. If you choose the right tool for the job, and you use it correctly, then the brace can work. But that, those are things that are very important to get right. So suggestions wise for you, I would say this, think of a brace as a tool used for a task, right? It is simply a tool, you're gonna use it for a task and you only use it when you need it. If you need it all the time, then you have to look at how that brace is going to fit in the alignment of it and how do I maintain my joint when I'm not in the brace. And if I'm only using it for your activity, make sure I use it appropriately for that activity. And next thing is always learn a good therapeutic exercise program associated with any brace to be sure that I am maximizing the benefit of the brace and I'm getting the best return from the brace. So in conclusion, I would say this, the healthcare team must come together. And that healthcare team really needs to be a physical therapist, an orthotist, the doctor, the doctor's gonna have to sign the script but we'd love to get them more directly involved as possible. Part of the problems in our healthcare system is it's rather silo based. And so many times these people don't come together directly for the patient. And that's a problem. One of the things that we work at very hard in our clinic is to make sure we say as connected as possible with the orthodist, with the physician. And of course, the last member of that team that's so important is the patient. Because we need to get with the patient preferences, what they're gonna utilize, what they are not gonna utilize, what they like or dislike. So we understand the benefits and, and what has already been tried and maybe has not worked. But this team must come together and really look at how do we problem solve out uh, the brace and, and do we get the right brace for you? I believe orthotic bracing can be effective, but it demands a well-educated team. Thank you for watching and we hope you found this helpful. This video is part of a series on orthotic rehabilitation, ranging from selecting the appropriate orthosis to comprehensive gait training with an orthotic. We encourage you to view our other videos in this series and to share them as well. You can find them on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash mission gate. Stay up to date on our latest content. Click the link in the corner to subscribe and be sure to like and share this video. Also, let us know what you think in the comments section below.